February 24th, 2020. The time now is approximately 1657 hours. This is in reference to Orange County case number 20 017904. I'm currently located in my unmarked vehicle um, out in front of 4748 France Lane, apartment number three in Winter Park um, at the Tealwood Park Apartments. And also in the car with me is my partner, Detective Scott Lowen. And um, in the front seat is, can you state your name, ma'am? Sarah Boone. Okay, and your birthday? 101077. Okay. <coughs> so, Sarah, I know you have talked to some deputies. I know we had a very brief conversation. Um, just to reiterate what you told that deputy, um, but like I was explaining, I would like to get a more further um, understanding of what happened last night and ask you more detailed questions. Um, I am going to read you um, your rights, but it's just because that's how we do things, okay? Um, so you do have the right to remain silent, okay? Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. Anything you say may be used against you in court. You have the right to talk to a lawyer before and during questioning without charge. If you cannot afford a lawyer and want one, one can be provided for you before questioning without charge. Has anyone threatened you or promised you anything to get you to talk to me? No. Do you understand what I just read you? Yes. Okay. So, last night you said that you and your boyfriend George were here at your residence and didn't really leave that day. You said that he went to the store to buy cigarettes. Yes. What time was that around? If you recall, was it light out still, dark out? Yes, it was light out still. It was still light out. Okay. Um, but he's the only person that left and he came back. Yes. I'm assuming. Okay. Um, it's right down the street. It's down the street. Okay. And um, tell me what, what you guys were doing next. Like what, what was happening? We had a bottle of wine. <clears throat> we painted, we drew, we did puzzles. Do you remember what wine you guys were drinking? Um, it's what is Woodbridge <coughs> Chardonnay. Okay. The bottles are in the trash. Okay. Chardonnay. Mm hmm Okay. And do you remember around, like, what time this was that you guys were sh sharing the bottle of wine, painting, mm. doing puzzles? I'm going to say mm, four-ish. Okay. And was this before he went to the store or after? I'm sorry? Had he already gotten home from the store at this point to buy the cigarettes? Yes. Okay. So it was around 4 p.m. Ish. That you realized and you guys were doing... Puzzles and art. Okay. Listening to music, enjoying each other's company. And all downstairs, upstairs? Where did downstairs. you guys... Downstairs. Downstairs. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we usually sit on the back porch because we smoke and you're not allowed to smoke inside, so... Okay. Um, and who was here last night? Was it just the two of you? Mm hmm Yeah? Okay. No one ever came over at any point? No. No? Okay. We called his daughters on FaceTime. <laughs> okay. I, we were just literally just enjoying one another's company. Okay. And you guys share the phone that you have, yes. correct? Um, okay. And the phone's located in there, I think, in the yes. kitchen area? Yeah. Okay. Um... So tell me what happens next. You're painting, you're, you guys are doing this puzzle together. You obviously finished the bottle of, bottle of wine. Yes. Um, did you have one or two bottles of wine? Well, we had one previously that was maybe not even half full. Okay. But then... <clears throat> so you finished that one and then you had the full one? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry, what was the question? Uh, just, what did you guys do next after the bottle of wine? Like after you well, guys we finished had, the wine? We had the bottle of wine while we were <coughs> having, doing our arts and crafts. Mm -hmm. And from there, just we didn't, we were puzzled out. We were painted out. Mm -hmm. So being silly, let's play hide and seek, which we had played before. Like, I don't know if you've opened the door on the top of the stairwell. Like he and I have hidden in there before, like just having fun and enjoying each other's company. Okay. So, I mean, that's literally all it was. And then the suitcase is downstairs because I was telling you we were getting ready to do donations. Mm -hmm. And because it's not a very good suitcase, the, 
what was the question? I'm sorry. You were just explaining to me the night. Oh, he decided to hide in there. So, being silly, he and I, I mean, were sitting there laughing at it, like, with him in there. And then, so I didn't zip it up all the way, but, I mean, enough to where his little fingers were out there and whatever, but still having a good time and whatever. Then, I guess I decided to go upstairs and I don't know, I fell asleep. So, I woke up this morning and again thought he was downstairs on the laptop looking for a job as he usually is. And then thought, where is he? Is he on the back porch? Is he in the bathroom? Like, where is he? And then I came to about the suitcase. So I opened the suitcase. I took him out, stretched him out, started to do CPR. Where air was coming out, but, and then like whatever gurgle. Like, he made, so I'm trying to do CPR on him. Mm -hmm. I'm shaking him, trying to get him to come too. But I could tell by looking at him, something was wrong. He's been losing his teeth lately and has been complaining about his chest hurts, which is why I keep trying to get him to go to the doctor. But because he nor I have a job or insurance has been putting it off. Mm -hmm. So again, so I didn't know what to do. So I called Brian, my ex-husband. I called him, he came over, just walked in and then walked out. I grabbed my phone and I called you guys. Okay. From there, here we are. Okay. The first time you woke up this morning, did you look at your phone to see what time it was? No. Most of the time, like, I'll wake up, but because he nor I have a job, I'll usually just lay in the bed for a little bit longer because the house is clean. There's nothing else that we can do. Mm -hmm. Me thinking he's on the laptop looking for jobs, I can't use a laptop. So most of the time, I'll just stay in the bed and collect my thoughts and get ready for the day. So do you have any idea what time you woke up that first time? What time it may have been? I don't know if you guys have a I'm going to say clock. 11 something. 11 okay. something. Okay. Maybe. Is that when you finally got up or is that the first time you woke up? No, that's the time that I decided to get up because I figured he was downstairs on the laptop. So right. let him look for jobs on the laptop and then it usually I'll clean, he'll look for jobs or vice versa where I'll look for jobs and he'll clean. Okay. So you think you got out of bed after 11 at some point? Yes. Okay. But we can't recall which time. Do you think you were up for like hours before that or no. collecting your thoughts? Brian, <coughs> because I was supposed to have my son today to okay. pick him up from school, Brian usually calls to make sure, hey, are you sure you're getting Lucas today? Because mm -hmm. I've had job interviews. Right. Are you going to pick up Lucas? So after he called like maybe three, four times, maybe five, um, I finally answered and that's like, do you think you were sleeping and missed those calls? No, I ignored them. You ignored them because okay. he's notorious for blowing up my phone. Okay. But I understand why, because he's making sure that Lucas gets home. Right. Yeah. Okay. And to do whatever he needs to do day wise so he can schedule around it. Were you upstairs in your room at that time when you were ignoring those phone calls? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're not really sure what time you woke up initially but you were upstairs collecting your thoughts you figured he was on the laptop downstairs so you were just getting ready for your day yes you finally got out of bed at sometime after 11 a.m mm -hmm. and had gone downstairs yes okay looking and for him and was <laughs> couldn't find him you looked outside couldn't find him anywhere and, and wasn't thought, in the bathroom i was right. thinking maybe he's in the bathroom but then i came to and, and then you the suitcase and then you and then you called Brian. Yes. Um, he told came him over. To come over. Yes, he came over. He lives down the road, right? Not very far. 
Um, he came over, walked in, basically walked out. You called 911. Yes, I had my phone in my hand. I just wanted to wait for him to get there because I didn't know what to do. Right. Okay. Um, and then we arrived. Like, I couldn't... I still, to the... I don't... I don't know what happened. Like, I don't know what happened, but... Like, my whole <laughs> thing is... The whole, like, teeth losing thing, and I don't know what happened. Like, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. He and I were having an amazing time yesterday, like we normally do. No arguments. No. no nothing. Okay. And the thing with him, though, is, which is why we've been doing puzzles and artwork lately, is that he's been stressing about a job, of course. Of course. Which we've talked about. So, what I did was start having him do puzzles and artwork to keep his mind off of it. Okay. His ex-wife is all over him about sending money, which mm -hmm. he can't do because he doesn't have a job. Right. So he was stressing about that. He's been stressing about the job. But that's why I started to buy puzzles and paint to get his mind off of them, which is what we, I don't know if you noticed on the wall in there, it's all of our artwork and stuff. Okay. So I don't know... <coughs> I mean, music, art, and playing with the dogs, dancing around the room with the dogs. I, and then decided to play hide and seek. Because we're always trying to outdo each other on where we can find, we can hide the best. How often do you guys play hide and seek? Gosh, that was maybe what, the third time? Maybe. Okay. Is it a more recent game you've gotten into or three times the total in your relationship you're talking about? Um, lately. Lately. Because, again, like, we were puzzled out. But we painted already, so why not? So you were downstairs hanging out. Um, do you remember around what time you guys started playing hide-and-seek? <coughs> hmm. Honestly, I don't. I... Do you remember if it was dark out? Yeah, it was dark. Okay. It was dark. But my thing is, is like when I spend time with him and I've kind of, I tried to get him to start doing it, it, I don't look at the clock. Okay. I just, I'm here with him and mm -hmm. we're having a good time. I don't need to know what time it is. Right. I didn't know if you were like on your phone, if you got a text message, if you got a phone call last night. We called his daughters <laughs> yesterday, FaceTime. Right. What time was that at? I don't know without looking at my phone. Okay. But I ended up... Was that the, would that be the only activity that you had yesterday on your phone? I called Lucas. I talked to Lucas. He's my son. Okay. At I night, always call him. Morning? Mm -hmm. No, it was evening. Evening? Okay. But... I'm just trying to help you, like, um, remember, a, like, something you did right before hide and seek that would help you re remember a time or give us a good time frame. Because that's important for, you know, us to know. We want to be able to tell the doctors that. I don't know, to be honest with you. Okay. <clears throat> so, when you called your... When you called Lucas, was it before or after hide and seek? Before. Okay. And when you called and FaceTime um, his daughters, daughters before or after hide and seek? Before. Okay. And did you call the daughters first and then Lucas or Lucas first and then the daughters? I... I know I talked to Lucas, but then we talked to the daughters afterwards. After? Okay. Okay. And I don't remember if she called us. No, I know he called Cookie. But yes, he, we called her. What are the two daughters' names? Or just one? Did you say one he daughter? He has three two? children. It's Anna, Cookie, what her real name is Destiny. And then he has a handicapped son, George. Georgie. Okay. Who did you call, though, yesterday? Who did he call? Cookie. And what is Cookie's real name? Destiny. Does she have his last name or some, something else? It's Torres. Because she remarried, but I don't know her last name. Okay. Um, okay, so you know it's dark out, but you're not really sure what time it is. You play hide-and-seek. How long do you guys play hide-and-seek before he decides to get into the suitcase? Oof. Wasn't approximate. Wasn't really. I hid upstairs in the shower. Mm -hmm. 
and then came downstairs because I was tired of hanging out in the shower. Okay. So that's when he was playing around in the suitcase. So okay. because I we both thought it was funny that oh yeah, oh, yeah well I'm gonna zip you up. Uh huh. You didn't come look for me. So again, it's a broken suitcase, but what do you mean by broken? It's only got one of these, but because um, I didn't zip it up all the way, he was doing the. You mean it doesn't have like the pull part? Correct. Okay, but it's no, got, it's got a. I think it's got a. What do you call it? A paper this, clip. Okay. So the zipper to it is missing. Like the actual zipper that attaches to it to help you open and close is missing. But you think a paper clip was on it instead? I, there is a paper. I believe there's a paper clip on it because I know okay. that the last that's time. That's what you used to like help assist you? Well, or you can just stick your <laughs> fingers in there and right, yeah, yeah. You unzip could do it yourself, it. which is why I did not zip it up all the way. Okay. So how much did you zip it up? I mean, I don't really know. You said his finger, he was, a, his fingers were able to stick out? <laughs> yeah, two, two fingers. fingers. Okay. Yeah, so I'm figuring he, he'll, he'll get it, he'll get it. But then I wanted to go upstairs and waited for him. And eventually, I guess I fell asleep. I had the dogs in the bed with me, was warm, and then fell asleep. So you guys are joking, he's in there, um, you said you could see two of his fingers? Yes. And then, <clears throat> like, you just decided, okay, I'm gonna go upstairs now, or? Because I figured he would get out and then go upstairs and have intimate relations like we normally do. Mm -hmm. But I fell asleep. Okay. And he never came upstairs. So, again, I'm thinking he's downstairs on the laptop earlier today okay. and then remembered okay so is this something that you do you guys play hide and seek before you have sexual intercourse or do you guys just play hide and seek because you're bored and you're just trying to pass time and it's fun we were yeah we were again puzzled out can't paint anymore even started to purge some of the art that's on the, the wall now so Case number 20-017904. Uh, I'm currently located at Tealwood Park Apartments 4704 Lucier. Lucier for Winter Park, Florida 32792. I am here with my partner, Detective Scott Long, with the Orange County Sheriff's Office. And can you state your name? Melissa May Sexton. And your birthday? 216.80. You are the property manager of this complex, correct? Yes. Okay. And <clears throat> um, we had Kim in here asking about the tenants, um, Sarah Boone and George Torres. Mm -hmm. And they have lived here, um, you gave us a date of February 9th, 2018? Correct. Okay. Um, you had told us that <clears throat> Sarah would confine in you about her and George's relationship. Can you tell us further what she would tell you? Yes. Um, Sarah, when, shortly after she moved in um, with George, she came to the office um, to talk to me. We noticed bruises and stuff on her. And um, she asked me if she could talk to me privately and asked how I could, how she would be able to get George off of the lease. Is there any way to do that? Uh, which prompted, you know, deeper conversation. Uh, she proceeded to, to let me know and she was showing me a lot of bruises and marks. Uh, there were handprints, scratches. She even at one point had to go to the hospital through multiple conversations that we had had. It steadily progressed, you know. Um, she had a very large gash at one point in her shin. She had to go to the hospital and get that taken care of. 
I'm not exactly sure what it was from, um, but I think it had to do when they got into a fight outside <laughs> and something got broke. I think it was one of their wine glasses or something. But, um, you know, she came to me at one point asking, you know, what do I do? Like, how can I get rid of him? You know, I don't, I've never dealt with this type of situation. Um, I just counsel her as she continued to come to me and explain to her that, you know, she had to make a decision if she was going to stay with him or not be with him. If she, you know, was going to try to work things out, they needed to seek out therapy, help, something. <laughs> um, it wasn't too long after that last conversation that I found out the police had came and George was arrested. Uh, I don't remember about how long it was in between time, but there was another incident after that where they both got arrested, all for domestic. Um, the complaints uh, throughout their whole term, roughly about 20 to 30 noise complaints, fighting, arguing, uh, banging on doors, uh, loud music. It was just always something pertaining to their lifestyle. I do know that I have seen both of them intoxicated as early as 9 o'clock in the morning, and I mean staggering, falling down, intoxicated, <laughs> both of them. Um, and there was a noise complaint that I had received about some fighting one day that was going on and Sarah was actually wandering around the property very drunk, um, barefoot, not properly dressed, <laughs> I'll say it like that, um, uh, sitting on the side of her building over by the retention pond. Um, when I was told about that is when I approached Sarah, sat down, talked to her. I even had also separately went and talked to George and told them that once they had sobered up, I needed to have a meeting with them. Um, the following business day, because this was a Friday, I do remember that, um, I went to see them Monday, roughly about 12 o'clock. They were sober. <laughs> they apparently had had some epiphany, you know, that they were going to straighten themselves up and start acting right. And they did very good for, well, it's basically until now. I haven't gotten any complaints since May of the past year, mm -hmm. you know. But up until that point, the complaints were consistent, monthly, always. Um, did, would you ever speak with George by himself? Like, did he ever confide in you about their relationship? The one time um, where, I, like I was just saying, that um, when I talked to her, she wanted me, she asked me to go talk to him. Um, but she's like, please, but put the fear of God in him. Fear of God in him. <laughs> I'm a very stern property manager. You know, I don't tolerate a whole lot of crap. Right. <laughs> and she knew that, and um, she seemed scared of him at the time. So I said, sure, no problem, just stay here. I will go talk to him. I went over, sat down, talked to George. I talked to him for about 30 minutes all together. And, you know, George had explained to me that she was actually the aggressive one. And the reason she ended up with Marks is uh, in my, I'll say my perception of what he was trying to explain is that she's very hands-on, in the face, you know, dramatized in, in talking and explaining or, or fussing or whatever they might have been doing. Right. And I, I believe that because Jean, my assistant, doesn't even like to deal with her, would avoid her like the plague <laughs> because she was always drunk and she's very hands-on. Uh, there was one day, as a matter of fact, it was that same day that I talked to George by himself. She kept grabbing me by the arms to the point that I told her, I said, touch me one more time, we're gonna have a problem. You know, I'm right. either gonna contact the police or whatever we need to do, but you can't keep grabbing on me. I had asked her several times to quit touching me. <laughs> and because of that, she would do the same thing to Jean, and Jean didn't like it. Right. So, um, you know, he, that's what he was explaining to me, is she was always the touchy one, the aggressive one, you know, not that she was hitting him, but she would be like in his face or she might, you know, push him or, you know, little things like that. Mm -hmm. And she would block him from coming out of the room or whatnot and he would take her and move her. Right. You know what I mean? And just, that's the way he had explained it to me. Right. She has told me, even literally to Monday, I have been told by her several occasions that he has drugged her around by the hair of her head. Mm -hmm. um, I've been, you know, told about by neighbors. Um, I'm sorry I don't have it anymore, but at one point a tenant actually sent us a video clip via text of them two fighting and beating on each other out in the backyard. Um, there was another complaint incident about a ladder being propped up to the wall that George was using to climb over the wall <laughs> to try to get back into his apartment, sneaking in and out. 
there was another night, sorry, I forgot to tell you about this too. Uh, I got a call for one of my vacants in building 24, uh, 4724, which is not their building. <laughs> there was a tent set up on my vacant back porch. <laughs> and it's apparently where George was sleeping for a couple of nights because she had him out of the house. I have another tenant here who may or may not speak to you, I'm not sure. Um, for that reason, I don't want to give you her name just yet without sure. talking to her, but yeah. George and her fighting that the, a different evening had actually wandered into her home. He was so drunk and had no idea where he was, and when she came home, luckily her kids were not there because she's a single mother with three kids. George was actually upstairs in her house hollering looking for Sarah, thinking he was in his apartment. <laughs> So we've had some incidences with them in that aspect, but nothing has ever been um, so bad that, you know, I didn't feel that we could resolve the problem. And like I said, we haven't had any issues since May of last year. No complaints, no nothing until this. So we thought, hey, they're doing great. You know, maybe they fixed the problems. <laughs> I mean. Has she come to you since May of any, of any issues? No, okay. not one time. But then, again, you did... It basically, they were told you're going to be evicted if there are. Yes. So it was kind of like uh, tighten that, up or get out. Yeah. It was okay. put up or shut up. I was over it. Yeah. If it continued, I was putting them out. Right. So. Did you ever see any marks on George? No. Not one. <laughs> not one. <laughs> like George was a little bit darker skin. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure Would you see I George would. as often as you saw Sarah? It sounds no. like Sarah came to you a lot more yes. than yeah. Us, We would always see Sarah as far as, the only time I ever really saw George is the time when we actually got George to sign off the lease. Right. Um, and he came to me and said, you know, I can't get back in the house. <laughs> She's got all my personal paperwork because would you please have a conversation with her so that I can get my personal paperwork back from her? He goes, but do you have a bolt cutter, a set of bolt cutters for my bicycle that's out back? And I said, what's it chained to, you know? And he said, it's actually chained to your AC unit. I said, yeah, no problem. I'll cut the lock. I'll cut the lock for anything attached to my AC unit. It's not supposed to be attached to that. So I went out back and actually cut the lock on both of the bike locks because Sarah would not answer the door for me because she knew George was there. Um, once George was gone, she had actually, because Sarah had my cell phone number, um, being that I had already went through and just got out of a very abusive relationship, Sarah knew that because, you know, I confided in her and explained that um, she did feel a lot more comfortable in coming to me. So she, I told her if she ever needed someone, you know, or it was an emergency, she could reach out to me and I would do my what I could to help her. You know, I felt bad for her. But after a while, when she just kept taking him back and taking him back, I just told her, I said, you know, you're just going to have to call the authorities. You're on your own. <laughs> it's obvious you don't want it to stop, you know. He's not doing anything to get help, according to you, and you just... Keep dealing with it. I mean, you know, there comes a point where it's just stupidity, you know. But that's the run-ins and instances that I've had with him. I've never seen a mark on George, and he's never told me that she's hit her at all. Okay. But she has told me in front of him that he has hit her and things that he's done, and he was not denying it. He never denied it. <laughs> so. George and her both expressed to me on many occasions that they knew they needed help. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I'm guessing due to their financial situation, not having any work, it's probably why they didn't do much. Right. Yeah. When you saw them together, who looked to be like uh, more dominant? I mean, did one seem to be more dominant over the other? George. George was very confident. Um, you know, he wasn't arrogant or anything. He, he, for the most part, stayed to himself. Like I said, there are a couple people here that he knew, <laughs> you know, from, I will say, another life <laughs> from Philadelphia. And, um, you know, George was the one I always seen driving the vehicle. George is the one I always seen playing with the child. Um, you know, never saw Sarah outside playing with her kid, ever. Um, as a matter of fact, most of the time, Lucas, you would find him riding around the property on his bike unattended. No parents outside, no nothing. Um, because I had actually had a conversation with Sarah about that. <laughs> and I said, you know, the, the kid was a great kid, don't get me wrong, he never did anything to get in any trouble, but it was more my concern for his well-being. You know, when he's all the way riding over here and around some of these corners with the dumpsters, these people don't see nobody, and they sure ain't gonna see no kid on that. So I had a conversation with her about that, and we haven't had any really problems. I thought I can say I've only seen Lucas on his bike away from her like that twice. She actually had secluded him to stay in front of the building. 
you know, which was fine. I just didn't want them all the way together. <laughs> but yeah, you didn't see Sarah at all. The only time I ever saw her, especially after the incident that took place with Emmett and his ex-girlfriend, um, it was more like a confrontation that took place in the office. She made an accusation on Emmett saying that he was trying to forcefully, like, I don't want to say rape, but he was trying to push himself on her. On Sarah? Uh, on Sarah. Some, so a, she made that claim. Some tenant? A different yeah, tenant? Yeah, another tenant that knew George from Philly. Um, and they confronted the two of them. Um, you know, I will say Sarah hold her gro hold, held her ground when the girl confronted her and asked her and said, you know, don't lie to my face. And Sarah said, yeah, he did, you know. So I was surprised because she knew that girl was over <laughs> butt. <laughs> and she's larger than me. So, you know, I was like, oh, my gosh, okay, well, maybe there's some truth to that. But it ended up, you know, just fizzling out. It was no big deal. After that situation took place, you really didn't see Sarah too much. She was pretty intimidated. Um, those two folks are actually a pretty large family that I have living here on site that actually took up four units at that time. So the whole Sam family lived here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a little intimidating. <laughs> so after that, we really didn't see a whole lot of her. But before that, they would hang out periodically. Exactly. The other two families? No, they just knew each other from the back couple. in the day. Oh, no, the couple did. Uh, the kids did. The kids. Did yes, that. that's what initially prompted it, and then that accusation was made yeah. during that same time. Okay. So. And when it comes to the kids on my property, I stay very involved with them. Yeah. We have some issues with our bus routes and all kinds of stuff. And uh, we had some kid vandalism being done, broken glass bottles. They were pulling glass bottles out of the trash, breaking them, thought it was fun. Um, and one kid told on another, the parents got involved. It became a little bit of an issue. Yeah. So I had to get in the middle to squash it, you know. Yeah. I didn't want anybody fighting on the property or kids getting hurt for that matter. But that's it. Is there anything else that you think is important for us to know about Sarah or George that we haven't discussed? Uh, <clears throat> I mean, no, I don't. Nothing really. They heard nicknames Drunk with the Bear. I mean, you know, literally. <laughs> we know they drank from sunup to sundown. Would she ever. I know she confined in you a lot. Would she ever admit that she was an alcoholic to you? Yeah. She would? Yes. Okay. I wish I still had my text messages. I sent it to me on text. Lady. I know we drink too much. And blah, blah, blah. And, uh, she told me that George one time had it enrolled in AA and was getting help. Now, brother, that was any truth. I have no idea. Um, a lot of stuff like that I just take with a grain of salt. Right. <laughs> you know, I think she was more concerned about the image that was being put in my head for them, and I think she was just trying right, to paint trying a prettier to... picture. Right. Because I will say, <laughs> it was like a week later, she was gone. <laughs> and when we go, you know, inspecting the property and walking around different projects, we do a lot of uh, pressure washing throughout the year. We do that a couple of times. You know, I ride around the back sides of the buildings, checking everything out. We've got a property drainage system back there. You always knew, because you'd ride back there and you'd hear, 9, 10 o'clock in the morning there, drunk, falling down, cutting up. <laughs> My God, I can't imagine you being drunk like that all the time. Jeez. Okay. Can you raise your right hand for me? Yes. Promise and swear everything we've talked about has been true and accurate to the best of your knowledge. Yes. Awesome. Sends our recording 12 to 20 hours.